and his anointing with us and his forgiveness of sin. So, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for your grace, for loving us and going all the way, God. Going all the way, Jesus, for us. You didn't look back. You just kept on plowing forward because you wanted us to be saved. So I want to thank you, Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Say, thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for going all the way, God, down that Via de la Rosa, down that painful road, God, to pay for my sins and to give me life everlasting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a glory. Hallelujah. Give the Lord glory. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. God bless you for coming. Hallelujah. We can bring the house lights down a little bit. Jerusalem that day the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street but the crowd pressed in to see a man condemned to die on Calvary he was bleeding from a beating there was stripes upon and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head. And he bore with every step the scorns of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb. Los soldados le abren paso a Jesús, mas la gente se acercaba para ver a quien llevaba aquella cruz. Por la vía dolorosa es la vía de
Give God glory, hallelujah. Give God glory, hallelujah. The pastor asked me to um, give a few scriptures on the blood of Jesus, and I picked out a few. And um, thank you, thank you for that. That always calms me down. <laughs> what a precious day it is today. Because he lives, I can live. The title of my sermon is The Blood of Jesus. Ephesians 1 7 says, He is so rich. Who's so rich? God is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom. I feel free tonight. Do you feel free? Because it's what He did on the cross. Hallelujah. He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. I want you to know that there is just no guilt that he holds against you. Maybe your neighbor, or your friend, or someone in the family, but he holds no guilt against you because he paid a price for your freedom. Hebrews 9, 14 says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God? And this is the scripture that really touches me because I... Grew up with a lot of mind battles. And he says, the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience from acts that lead us to death. Sometimes you don't even have to do anything, but the acting in your mind can lead you to destruction of yourself. But Christ came, he says, to cleanse our conscience. Who can cleanse our conscience? Let me tell you, medication doesn't do it. It might make things worse. Jesus cleansed our conscience. So whenever you have trouble with your mind and it's going through, it's racing or it's, you know, we don't have the answers, we don't have the wisdom, you can call on the blood of Jesus. I'm turning around because I want to see your faces. <laughs> the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience. And why does it cleanse it? So that we may serve the living God. Yes, serve him with a clean conscience because you've been washed with the blood of Jesus. Amen? Colossians 1.20, and through him, which is Jesus, to reconcile, bring us together to himself all things, whether things on earth he brought together to him, or things in heaven, by making peace through the blood shed on the cross. Don't ever forget that the blood of Jesus was shed on that cross for us. And he says here that I brought all things together. Why? For peace. The blood of Jesus brings peace. Praise the Lord. My last scripture, because we all have had a death sentence on us. We all had a death sentence on us we, because it's because of Christ we live, right? But I love when God gets down and he starts destroying the devil. I love how he talks to the devil and how, you know, he says this. He says, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 54, and then the saying that is written will come to pass. Death has been swallowed up in victory. He killed death. When he was on the cross, he killed death. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. That's what kills us, is sin. But the sting of it is gone because he washed us in the blood. And the power of sin is the law. Oh, the things that I have done and, and you know, there's, there's, the law has, you know, makes, you know, I've done these bad things and I just feel the power of, it just pounds me down. But God says, I took that off. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory 
every time the devil wants to pound on us, just remember that you got the victory. And all you have to say is, you know what, Lord? I I'm being bombarded. We know we always say that we're being bombarded right now. You can say, I got the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Love you. And thank you for coming tonight. Pastor Fernando. Thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. Isn't it wonderful to be born again, to be saved, to know God? And for those of you that may not know what I'm talking about, I hope you will by the end of this service tonight. Thousands of years ago, God the Father created pictures, examples, types, shadows of a Jesus that would someday come and save mankind from their sins and forgive them. It came in the form of sacrifices. Every offering, every sacrifice, every ritual, every ceremony that we read about in the Old Testament was all about a Jesus that would sometime come. God found himself, as a result of sin, Adam and Eve, God found himself in a bit of a predicament. Now, I know that. I don't know how theological that is, to say that God was in a predicament. But God was faced with a challenge. How do I kill the thing that I hate, which is sin, but save the thing that I love most, which is mankind? And so something innocent had to take the place of something guilty. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So they would sacrifice animals, which today would be considered barbaric or cultic. But in the Old Testament, they would go ahead and take animals. And the death and the blood of that animal would cover their sins. But again, that was just a shadow of the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. His name is Jesus Christ. I want to take the next few minutes before we partake in Holy Communion together and talk about or accentuate on what Liz just shared, the blood of Jesus. In John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Of course, he's talking about the hunger and the thirst of the human soul. And we try to satisfy ourselves with everything imaginable in life. And for those that don't know Jesus, that would be considered the unchurched or the unbeliever, God bless them, God help them, because they're doing the best they can to try and fill their lives with what they think will satisfy them. But Jesus himself was very clear in saying, listen, I'm the only thing that satisfies, he says. I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger again. And he who believes in me shall never thirst again. Let's come to the well that never shall run dry this evening. Let's tap into God's provision for us. You know, I've come to realize through the years that God loves every human being that's ever born. Make no mistake about it. God has not forsaken anybody that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But I, I want to talk about the subject of blood because it's so misunderstood. Some people even in the, in the church may not fully understand the significance of the blood of Jesus. And certainly those that are outside the church say, why do they have such a bloodthirsty religion over there at Firehouse Church? Why the blood? Number one, because it cleanses us spiritually. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> After a hard day's work, or you work in the backyard, or just watch TV, but two days go by, how many know a shower is always nice? Isn't it nice to wash your face and cleanse your body? How many feel good after a good cleansing? Now, I want you to apply that to the spirit that needs cleansing that picks up things in life, things that try to attach itself to us. 
that's not healthy. The blood cleanses us spiritually. Hebrews 9.22, the first part of that scripture says, all things are cleansed with blood. Read that with me. All things are cleansed with blood. The blood of Jesus. I'm going to give you five things here this evening before we take Holy Communion. I pray that after I share these with you, you're going to have a better understanding of why the blood of Jesus on that cross was so very important. Number two, why the blood? It brings forgiveness. Liz mentioned that. How many appreciate when someone forgives you? Doesn't it feel good when you know you've done something that's offensive or wrong or marginal and you go to somebody and say, I'm sorry, and they say, hey, don't even worry about it, man. That's what Jesus does. That's what the blood does. As a matter of fact, he actually says, don't mention it. He says, once you repent of your sins, your sins are forgiven, and they're thrown away as far as the east is from the west. Now, as far as I know, Christian, I can't imagine the two ever meeting. I, my mind can't fathom that. It goes east, it goes west, and they never meet. He says, that's how far away I've thrown your sins away. And Jesus says, once you ask me to forgive you, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. And then all you have to do after that is forgive yourself and move on and say, listen, I've done some wrong things. I've made some bad decisions, but Jesus forgave me, so I think it's about time I forgive myself and move on. Come on. <laughs> Hebrews 22, the latter part of that scripture says, and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of sins, the King James puts it. I've kind of, I've kind of memorized through the years, the King James is very poetic. But it says, without the shedding of blood, without Jesus, you'll not get spiritual forgiveness from anything or anybody or anything you can do or conjure up on your own. You cannot earn your way to heaven. It's a free gift from God and through his forgiveness. Why blood? Number three, because life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. John 6, 53, then Jesus said to them, and if those of you that have a Bible and you have a red letter edition Bible, it shows you the words of Jesus Christ. And he said, most assuredly, say that with me, say most assuredly. In a world that so many things are unsure and, 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 and not solid and we can't count on, so we can't really count on the economy. We can't really count on our politicians. We can't even count on ourselves sometimes. But you can count on this. Most assuredly, he says, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Now, wait a minute. He says, unless you, listen, and that's what this is about. We're going to take Holy Communion. And symbolically, we're going to take his flesh and his blood and make it a part of us. Most assuredly, I say, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no, there is no life in you. No real life. How many know here this evening that there's really no life outside of God? He's given us our next breath and the gift of life. Verse 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And that is the reason we partake in Holy Communion. The blood of Jesus brings life to us just as the blood in our physical bodies carries life throughout our body. Then every time we take a breath of air, our blood is oxygenated through our avili in our lungs. And that blood takes a circuit through your body and disperses that oxygen. Right, Brad? Paramedic. Every breath. Can you imagine that every, every time we breathe, we can thank God for the miracle of life? And there's life in the blood and the oxygen is dispersed through our body and then when that, that blood is, is worn out and all the oxygen has gone out of that blood, guess what you do? You take another breath and you oxygenate that blood again and you do this for years and years and years. And so the blood of Jesus brings us spiritual life. Why blood? Number four, there's protection through the blood of Jesus. And I hope, I hope you can appreciate that point. 
Divine protection. How many pray for that every so often? God protect me. God be with me. God help me. We, we pray for traveling mercies. We're going to be praying this Sunday for our team that's going to uh, travel, a missionary team to Poland. And we're going to be praying for traveling mercies and protection. But I want you, aren't these good things to know about the blood? Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He says it's, it's, it's the lack of having the blood that will destroy the enemy, but it's the presence of the blood that protects the believer. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever ne neglect. Don't ever hesitate to call upon the blood for protection. To guard my home and guard my children. To heal me of every sickness and every disease in Jesus' name. Last but not least, number five, why the blood? We overcome Satan through the blood. Come on, we get to get back at him a little bit. How many, how many raise your hand and say, the devil attacks me from time to time? Some of you may be under attack this evening. I want to introduce you to the blood of Jesus on this Good Friday. We overcome Satan through the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Can I add something to this, this list of five? I think I'll add number six just off the top of my head. When I was standing here worshiping the Lord, I couldn't help but look around and say, wow, this is the church. Huh? Saw a rainbow come in in the back there. I said, man, this brother's been with me now for, I don't know, 12 years or so. And I'm not really caught up on the time, but... I remember, I remember the first car show that we did a car show. I didn't even, I don't think I even had a car. Oh, yeah, I did. I had a 37. We had a car show. And uh, where's Jesse Peraza? I saw him walk in here somewhere. Right? And, and Jesse's dad says, Pastor, you need to talk to that guy. He's the president of the Viejitos Car Club. This is, this is all his guys. You need to talk to him. And I, I said, I'm going to talk to him. So I, I, I did what every good pastor do. I bought him a hot dog. I bought a couple of hot dogs. I said, here's for the guys. And, and so I bought him some hot dogs, and I began to talk to him. And he said, you know what? I'm going to try out your church. And he came to church. That's got to be at least 12, 13 years ago. And here he walks into the house of God. But we all have a special bond. We all have special relationships that's being built through the blood of Jesus. We all have something in common here. Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in his sight. And we're all together in this place. You say, Pastor, are we ever going to take Holy Communion? Yes, we will, right now. Let me share some scripture with you. Holy Communion is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. The Bible says, And when he had given thanks, being Jesus, he broke the bread and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And if you, further, if you look further in the scripture, it says, Do this as often as you will. You know the first Holy Communion I ever had was at North Hollywood High School during nutrition time. And the guy, Steve Lagos, that led me to the Lord said, we're going to take Holy Communion. Never had it before. No, that's not true. I had it in Catholic Church when I was a kid. Scared me to death. Didn't know what I was doing. But anyway, I was there. But uh, he said, here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Holy Communion. My first Holy Communion that I took after being saved was a fruit punch and a, and a piece of a submarine sandwich bread. It wasn't kosher. It wasn't fixed special. But it was the greatest thing in the world. It's my first real Holy Communion. But Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So what I'd like you to do, and it might take a moment. Liz, here's yours. I want you to get your Holy Communion. Did we pass those out yet? Yes, come on up. 
If you did not get one of these, we want everyone now. The only prerequisite to taking Holy Communion is that you believe in God. Don't throw away that round thing. That's actually the bread. It's kind of like, uh, looks like a little piece of cardboard or something, but it's actually the bread. And when you get it, I'd like, to put, I'd like you to put it in your hand and lift, lift it up before the Lord. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to give you a minute because you've got to peel that thing off. I know it's a... Yes. Does anyone not have one and you need one to, to join in with us? We want to make sure everybody's included. I want you to take that and I want you to break it because that's what Jesus did. He broke the bread. Because his body was broken for us, he says, eat, take of my body and let it be a part of your life. Go ahead and partake. It doesn't taste like any bread you've ever had. I know that, but there's a reason for that too. It was unleavened bread. He didn't want a lot of flavor. He didn't want you to eat it saying, mm. He wanted you to eat it in remembrance of his body being broken. Verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes back. I want you to take that cup and drink that wine. Well, grape juice. I don't want anybody getting too happy here. It's, it's grape juice. Close your eyes. Let's meditate on the Lord for just a moment. Yes. Let's meditate on the Lord and thank God. Liz, we're the richest people on the earth to, to have a church like this. Look at all these wonderful people just coming together in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for Good Friday. What a good Friday it is. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Precious blood of Jesus, the blood that covers me. Take me in your presence, for that's where I long to be.
I want to I want to I want to speak to specific to specific people right now. Those of you that are here and maybe you're a visitor. Maybe you're asked to come. You were invited by a friend or maybe that person told you you're coming with me. <laughs> but you're here. And some of what we've done here this evening maybe is a mystery to you and Maybe you've had experience with church or God in the past. Maybe you have not, but you're here tonight and God is knocking on the door of your heart. If, you're, if you want to receive Christ as your Savior, because there is a heaven and there is a hell, and we get to choose where we end up in eternity by making a decision for or against Christ. And so I give you that right now. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Son of God, is knocking on the door of your heart. And if you want to open your heart, I'll lead you in a prayer, a special prayer. But you're here and you're ready to do that. Raise your hand and put it down. Just raise it up. I'm going to look around here. Anybody, God's knocking it. Good for you. God bless you. Who else? Don't be shy. Don't hold back. This could be it. Tonight could be your last stop. Raise your hand. Just raise it up real high and put it down. If you're here and you want to receive Christ as your Savior, God bless you. Good for you. It takes courage to do that. We don't want to embarrass anyone here. Anyone else? God's not done yet. Anyone else? Raise your hand. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. Because that's what it's all about. Someone else? Raise your hand here that I didn't see over here. God bless you. Good for you. Okay, good, Caleb. Come on. Good for you. Look at that. Come on. Take advantage of this moment before I change the order of service. Anyone else? You have not yet raised your hand, but you say, yes, I feel God knocking on the room. I don't have all the answers. I haven't figured it all out. Well, you're not going to. Jesus wants to come in. I see your hand. Good for you. God bless you back there, brother. Come on. Good, 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 good. Anyone else? You'll never beat the deal that you're being offered here tonight, and that is having Jesus forgive you of your sins and all the blood of Jesus, all the things that the blood does that we describe, it protects you, it cleanses you, it saves you, it comforts you. That which you've been searching for your whole life is here tonight, the presence of God. Anyone else? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Good. If you raise your hand, and we had several, young man back here, Back here, Caleb. Right here. Now, did you raise your hand for both of you or just one of you? Was that just one of you or both? Come on. Good for you. Give God praise. They're clapping because this is, this is, this will be, I promise you, if you pray this prayer with me and you mean it in your heart, this will be the turning point of your life. make you guys come here or did he just invite you? I don't know, but it doesn't matter you're here, right? I, I, don't, I don't really know you, but God's reaching out to you. He's seen everything. He's loved you all through the process. You say, where, where was God when this happened? He sees. He knows. Stand with me, church. Let's pray. For all of you that raised your hand, I'm going to tell you something. I might have missed one or two, but God doesn't miss a thing. God sees you. And what we're giving you is a visitor's packet. It's just some information about our church, and there's a very important card we'd like you to fill out there. And that card is a visitor's card. We just want to know who you are so we can pray with you and pray for you. All right. You ready to pray this prayer with me? All right. No stranger to this, but God is touching you. You know, this is a great prayer for everyone to pray. Can we pray what's known as the prayer of salvation or otherwise known as the sinner's prayer? Can we pray that together? Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you now, to you now. A, sinner a sinner in need of salvation. I need my Savior. I can't save myself. I need you, Jesus. I believe that over 2,000 years ago you hung on a cross 
You shed your precious blood. You became the Lamb of God that takes away all my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins. I turn the other direction. And from now on, I'll walk with you. I'll serve you. You will be my God. And I will be your child, your disciple. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise. You might, you might be thinking, it can't be that simple. It is. It's that simple. Did you, guys, did you pray that prayer with me? Good. I, I, don't, know, I don't know why, but I'm, I'm disappointed in you, brother. God really wants to do something in your life. I know nothing about your background. Do I know you? I don't know anything about your background, do I? But God does. He wants to do a work in your life. He wants to do a work in your life. He wants to bring marriages together. He wants to bring families together. You know, the first thing God established when he created man was family. Even before the church, he created family. And from that family would flow the power of church. It's a powerful thing, a wonderful thing. Thank you, Jesus. Place your right hand over your heart. And say, I believe. I believe. What do you need? Do you need the blood to bring you protection, direction, healing, salvation, forgiveness, comfort, power, stability? Oh, there's nothing that God can't do. Father, we celebrate this Good Friday with faith believing. Sylvia, you're here. Sylvia, where is she? She was here in the back. Sylvia, I believe the Lord has a word for you tonight. It's going to get better and better. You know what we're going to do, Sylvia? We're going to grow old gracefully. And God is ministering to you all the time. Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? No, but God's going to bless you anyway. He's going to bless you. Part of that is family. The family's expanding. And I know you've heard this a million times, but I remember when you were born, girl, so you belonged to Jesus. She was dedicated to the Lord when she was a baby. And here we are. Look at this. Father, I pray blessing on our families. We pray for health, prosperity, success, strength, comfort and an unction from the Holy Spirit to serve you like never before. In the name of Jesus, amen. Say amen. You may be seated. I just want to say we're glad to have Pastor Brenda Diaz with us here from Praise Chapel Montebello. Pastor John and Lucy, Praise Chapel, Los Angeles there. We've got Pastor Easy and Jen Itaburo, Agape Church in Fullerton. Come to visit us here. Praise the Lord. They're going to be with us Sunday. Awesome. I said that so that you can't change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Isn't it wonderful? Mama Liz has been doing that song since we started the church 33 years ago. <laughs> Praise God. Roxy, come on up. Amen. Um, I have the privilege of taking up today's uh, tithe and offering. I have a scripture for you. It's Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with all your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. So let us give them everything that we produce. The best part of what we produce. He gave it all for us, right? So let's give them the best that we produce. We have multiple ways to give. They're up on the screen. Uh, we have push pay. You can go on our website, our app. You can call me. You can raise your hand. We'll give you a tithing envelope. And I have some announcements. Just one. Easter Sunday, this Sunday. Do not miss it. 9.30 here in the auditorium. It's going to be powerful, and we can't wait to see you. Uh, can I get the ushers? Oh.
Father, we come before you today, Father. We ask that you bless this offering, Father, for the furthest of your kingdom. And Father, we just thank you for the things you do and continue to do in our lives tonight, Father. We give you all the praise and glory and honor. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Fernando. seated one more time before we dismiss you. I believe it was 1958 that Charlton Heston starred in, in the Ten Commandments. Was it 58? I think it was 
right around 50, 1958. And the director, the director of that movie, how many have seen that movie, the old movie with Charlton? Good for you. Some classics there, The Ten Commandments. You need to see it. And the director of that was Cecil B. DeMille. And some of you may, and maybe Kendra doesn't even know why, but sometimes when Kendra comes around, I said, it's Kendra B. DeMille. Because she's the one that puts all the, with a little help from her friends. She, she puts all this together. Thank you, Kendra. Yeah. You caught yourself on video, didn't you? You were video. But uh, not alone. Of course, she gets a, has a lot of help. But she's the one that is very creative, and she helps us with all the decorations. We want to thank our ushers and usherettes and all the leaders that helped us out with this service. They came up with this idea. I think it was Pastor David Mendoza. She came up with an idea or somebody say, hey, let's uh, have a little more intimate setting here for Friday. But uh, listen, you don't want to miss Sunday. You don't want to miss Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Where we honor God and bless him. It's going to be a great day. And we got a lot in store for you on that day. We got a great, uh, I, don't, I don't like to call it a program, you know. It's a church service. But we have a great program or church service for you. Uh, and it's going to be wonderful. And um, we're going to go ahead and put out a challenge, okay? We have nice, real nice gifts for, we're going to raffle. All of our visitors will get a raffle ticket. So we're going to have a raffle for some real nice gifts. But we're going to give a very special gift to the person that invites the most people and brings them to church. So if you're that person and you get, you know, I mean, go to 7-Eleven, grab anybody you can. I don't care. As long as you bring them in here. Oh, man, you fill up a row, that'd be great. But if the person that brings the most people will get a very nice gift from Firehouse Church. We want to get them in here. Once they get in here, God will touch them. That's our confidence. Right? So get out there and outreach. I don't care if it's the guy under the bridge, uh, somebody from work. Anybody you can get in here, they're going to get the gospel. We should be outreaching. We're, we're believing God for great salvations. Uh, we usually run the highest number of people in the church on Sunday, Easter Sunday. So uh, we want to take advantage of that and bring the gospel in. I have a powerful message to preach. And we got, we got some great videos, some great, great time we're going to have here on Easter Sunday. So make sure you get here. Get here early. We'll be praying at, uh, what time do we pray? At uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. We're going to be here at 8 o'clock. So don't worry. You come from 8 to 9. You can come and pray with us in the prayer room there. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight in celebration and fundraising, <laughs> we're always doing fundraising, uh, we have food for you tonight, and here's what they've got. They've got stuffed chicken quesadillas with rice and beans and a drink for a donation of $10 or more. So it goes for Heart for the House, our Heart for the House program. Stand with me, church. We're going to dismiss you tonight. Give the Lord Jesus a good hand. Can we honor him again? I want to thank Rudy Cruz. Thank you for filling in so wonderfully. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate our pastors coming out tonight and meeting with us here. Father, we're just so grateful. We're so grateful. Thank you for the reunion. Thank you for the gathering together of the saints. Thank you for your blood that washes away our sins, cleanses us, protects us, leads us, and guides us. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping our families together. Thank you for a fresh start. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us before we ever loved you. Bless us as we go. Bless this fundraiser the food and the fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's take our time and greet one another, hang out with one another, fellowship, and eat some good food. God bless you. You are dismissed. We've also got coffee and refreshments. That's free of charge. Don't need any donations for all the sweets in there. we got cookies and coffee and all of that. Shake some hands. Make yourselves friendly. And don't forget about Easter Sunday. Love you all. Can't wait to see you on Easter. <laughs>